So, good evening, friends. Now we will take up in this third part the judicial interpretation. What is the judicial interpretation? In fact, uh, the basic judgment here pertaining to this subject of uh, mismanagement is covered in Rajamandri Electric Supply Corporation versus A. Nagesh and others. A.R. 1956, Supreme Court 213. And then, in this, a petition was brought against a company by certain shareholders on the ground of mismanagement by the directors. The court found that the vice chairman grossly mismanaged the affairs and had drawn considerable amounts for his personal benefits. And that large amounts were owing to the government for changes for supply of electricity. That machinery was in a state of disrepair. The, the directorate had become greatly at, attenuated and a powerful local junta was ruling the roost. And that the shareholders outside the group of chairmen were powerless. Then this was held to be sufficient evidence of mismanagement. And the court said, we will interfere. And then, in fact, appointed court, uh, the court accordingly appointed two administrators for the management of the company for a period of six months, vesting in them all the powers of directors. So this is how, in fact, the judicial review will come into picture. A similar management was provided by a company by, in a company by the Calcutta High Court in Richardson and Kudos Limited versus Haridas Mundra. And in R.S. Madhur versus V.H.S. Madhur, in fact, 1959, 29, company cases 547. The Allahabad High Court said there should be present and continuing mismanagement. Now I will take you through some examples like the oppression. Here also, I will take you through some, in fact, examples of mismanagement. What are they? And then, like I have given various examples of oppression, same is the case here. Violation of law and articles. In Akbarli A. Culvert versus Konkan Chemicals Private Limited, 1994 3, Company Law Journal 102, it was held that transferring shares without first offering them to the existing shareholders. In accordance with their right issue rights under the articles, in fact, amounts to mismanagement. Next, a conspiracy to defraud members and abuse of fiduciary duties. I have already explained you directors' fiduciary duties. That aspect comes into picture here. In Hemantri Vakil versus RDA Print and Publishing Private Limited, 1993, three company law journal. 113. The company law board held that the allegations of abuse of fiduciary duties, conspiracy to defraud members by changing pattern of shareholding, by misappropriation of company resources, allotment of shares to obtain majority support by a large scale fabrication of documents, all amount to mismanagement. In the same way, infighting among the directors also could be taken. Shishu Ranjan Datta versus Bolanath Paper House Limited, 96. 1983, 53 company cases, 883. The Calcutta High Court has taken up this matter and held the where the managing director of a company continued in office after that term has expired, without after his term expired, without a meeting being held to reappoint them, reappoint him prior to making a fresh application to the central government then it is nothing but mismanagement. Now, in fact, uh, trading unprofitably, this was dealt with in re exp This is 1992 BCLC 724, English Court Chancery Division. Justice Winniloft said, there can be no doubt that if the directors of a company continue to trade with the company, is making losses and when it should have been apparent that there was no real prospect that the company would return to profitability, the court may draw the inference that the director's decision was improperly influenced by the desire to continue in office and in control of the company 
and to draw remuneration and other benefits for themselves and others connected with them and this amounts to act of mismatch. <clears throat> In the same way, 1964-68 CWN-163, re Albert David, it was held that the condition that prevent the proper functioning of the company, according to the provisions of the Indian Companies Act, the uncertainty as to the de jure character of the board and difficulty of having the state of affairs rectified in the usual way, the patent fact that the company was being run by the board in their own interest, overriding the wishes and interest of the majority of the shareholders, invariably proves mismanagement. In the same way, collusive sale of assets. In fact, uh, <clears throat> this is also an important uh, issue where assets of the company are sold collusively for the personal benefit of the directors and then leading to erosion of substratum of the company. So friends, these are all the various instances where mismanagement is taken into account. Now I will again take you to the, in fact, the provisions of the act once again, like uh, section, for example, 241. <clears throat> Please see, with this background, with now you have got more maturity. Let us look at the provisions again. This is how you have to give interpretation and analysis in the examination point of view. Please see, 241. Any member of a company who complains that the affairs of the company have been or are being conducted in a manner prejudicial to public interest or in a manner prejudicial or oppressive to him or any other member or members in a manner prejudicial to the interest of the company. So what all I have discussed with judicial interpretations now come to relevancy of section 241 subsection 1a. Now come to 1b. There is a material change not being a change brought about by or in the interest of any creditors, including the venture holders or any class of shareholders of the company, has taken place in the management or control of the company, wherein by an alteration of the board of directors or manager or in the ownership of company's shares, or if it has no share capital, its membership, or in any other manner whatsoever, and that by reason of such change, it is likely that the affairs of the company will be conducted in a manner prejudicial to its interests or its members and a class of members. With the word mismanagement stated earlier under 397, 398 of 1956 Act, now that's missing. But the meaning is same. So the substratum has not gone. The substratum is same. That is the most important aspect here. And then what it says, <clears throat> one is oppression, second is material change, which affects the management. That is nothing but mismanagement. Material change means there is a substantial change in the governing body, then public interest. Now this is the most important aspect. What do you mean by public interest here? What a business unit like a company has to do with the public interest? Public interest was examined in the legislative debates. Every enactment before it is passed would be subject to debates in the legislature, parliament or assembly. When we do research to understand the meaning of a particular legislation, sometimes we'll have to go through the legislative debates, which is very important. This particular provision of Com Companies Act, public interest originally was not there in 1913 Act. That was brought into force subsequently in 60s through an amendment. Then, there was a wider discussion as to what is the meaning of public interest? Why are we bringing public interest? Then in those days, there were great people like Chintaman Deshmukh, 
finance minister K M Munshi explained to the parliament that public interest is this. There is a mine. This is what in verbatim stated in this particular legislative debates, parliamentary debates. I am quoting. <clears throat> this particular mine goes further in digging. It will lead to ecological imbalance. So a group of shareholders says. We will close it, go to some other area, but we will not go further. Nearby there may be a river, there may be a rivulet or something, then sometimes accident water will come. Several such cases happen, in fact, in India. Majority shareholder says, no, we will learn profits and then we will proceed off. Now minority says, no. Now minority is snubbed and majority proceeds further. Minority shareholders can go to the NCLT and then file a case and say against public interest the company is acting. It will create tomorrow devastating effect on the ecology so that the matter should be in fact taken into account and then there should be a restraint order. Injection order can be granted. So this is public interest. That's the reason why in LLM stage also this is called in fact uh, the Travex preparatories. That is called legislative debates. You must always look at a particular law with the background of legislative debates, which are available in the appropriate assembly or parliament as the case may be, and they sell. We have to obtain them. If necessary, if you take up a research project based on the subject matter, you have to then choose the appropriate, uh, in fact, uh, debates, and then you have to obtain them. So, <laughs> With this particular background, you have to further study. So, public interest means a company cannot live in isolation today. Now, CSR, Corporate Social Responsibility, has come to stay. So, in that regard, a business unit cannot go only with a business motive. It must also have a kind, a sense of social responsibility. And it must, in fact, ensure there is no pollution it has caused. Environmental protection is ensured. And then social welfare has to be considered. That is the reason why <clears throat> the concept of public interest, where as a minority shareholder, even though personally I am not affected, in general country is affected, then in the public interest, I can move the company above, I mean the national company or tribunal. And I can take appropriate steps to prevent damage to the public interest. So, this is the gist of section 241, read with the powers under 242 of the Companies Act 2013 pertaining to this subject of operation and mismanagement. So, with this background, my dear friends, I request you to study further the subject matter and go for further judicial interpretations. The latest case law also, as and when you get and put them in your WhatsApp group, the latest cases of oppression and mismanagement. Go through internet, necessary textbooks, and next two weeks you study what are the latest case law on this oppression and mismanagement. Don't go by sections. You say latest case law of Supreme Court on oppression Prevention of Oppression and Mismanagement under the Companies Act, either under 1956 Act or 2013 Act, both are relevant. Then you find cases, each case you put it in the WhatsApp for the benefit of the students. And please mark a copy to me also. The citation and then the necessary details thereof. This exercise will benefit you as well as benefit others also. So friends, with this uh, uh, background, I conclude my discussion on the subject of oppression and mismanagement, and then I will proceed further with other topics in due course of time. We'll meet again. Thank you very much, and then good night. Bye-bye.